allow me to ask about one of your defensemen. Luke Rowe had quite the the weekend. It was he was he kind of setting out to get other guys involved, or is that just how he read the game to get that many of assists rather than scoring his own goals? He's just really a good player. I mean, uh, he w- uh, we finished last in the league last year, and uh, he was uh, second team all league. He was an all league player uh, on a last place team. Um, he he just a, he's just a really good college hockey player. To be honest with you, he's a re- he's one of those not every not every really good to great college hockey player is, is destined to be a pro. Um, but the the way Luke Rowe plays the game, like he's got some front side, he can help generate offense on the back line. Like he's hard to handle. He's physical. He's smart. He's good defensively. Um, he there's no question. Uh, like he has the ability. Uh, not he's showing that he can that he's a great college player, but but he he has like there's no question he could play some level of pro hockey and 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 not. Just the lower levels. I, I'm not saying he's an NHL player, but there's no question in my mind. In all due respect to how good the American League is and the East Coast League, uh, he's a slam dunk, slam dunk East Coast League player, and and I think uh, I think uh, American League level player as well. Uh, that third line that you ended up elevating to the top line on Sunday with uh, Schwartzy and and Mason, that 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 line has been together. A lot, right? Over the last couple of seasons, what do you, what do you like about those three guys playing together? Well, they, they're just a good compliment, and and it's a line that's built. It's a line that's built to be a fan favorite. I mean, you've got that great big, long, strong, hard, nasty kind of guy in McCormick in the middle who's good on the dot, and then you, then we got we got those road runners on the wings, and they go and like like. Lines like that, players like that uh, are, are fun to watch. Uh, they give us, uh, obviously, they, they give us a lot of momentum. And that's why, uh, you, know, in, you know, out of respect to uh, our point producers, our top po- point producers, Gavin and Costantino and Brown, you know, to start that game Saturday, we wanted this, we wanted, uh, the intent was, intent was to, to, uh, to, to send a message and, and, uh, and, and set the tempo and pace. And, you know, what better line? Uh, to do that than than, uh, Adams, uh, McCormick, and Schwartz. Coming up, you guys got four games in seven days. Do you like that, you know, being able to get those reps in early in the season or not at all, the timing of it? Um, I'll tell you on Friday night. How's that? Yeah. Um, Like, who knows? Like, it's a a good question and it's a fair question, but uh, – and in if I in a perfect world I, I would I would ra- I'd rather sco- uh, play on 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 Friday and Saturday. But Michigan State just played Lake Superior on Saturday and Sunday as well, and they're traveling all the way here. Um, so we're going to rack them up and and uh, and go and like you just you just never know. Th- this is the way it worked out, and uh, because of the football game, we had to play Thursday and Friday, and and uh, it is what it is, and you deal with it and. Uh, uh, we're going to have a concentrated amount of games in a short period of time. You know, the biggest fear that you have when you have that many games in a short period of time is is injuries. And uh, we got out of that weekend. We, we Nate Horn got injured, but I think other than that, I think we got out pretty uh, pretty clean. And we played hard. And uh, and uh, we just found out that uh, Horns is not it's, his injury is not a fracture, which is huge. Uh, he's a good player for us. And uh, a senior and a good player and a good, you know, we need him. And uh, so, so that's, uh, that put a little extra skip in my step today. But uh, uh, so we got through it physically. And, uh, you know, now we got the Michigan State Spartans coming, and they're loaded for bear. Uh, they've got a new coach. Adam Nightingale was there last year, and he's resurrected that program. And uh, he knows what he's doing. He's a, he's a good hockey man. Uh, he's, he pieced together a, a resume, a coaching resume, that started out with uh, prep schools at Shattuck St. Mary's and all the way through the NHL, and now he's back at his alma mater, and he knows what he's, what he's doing. And he, he's getting those high-level blue-chip players that Big Ten schools should get that Michigan State wasn't getting before. He's getting those guys in there right now, and uh, not only uh, not only are they going to be a handful for us, 
they are going to be a top 10. I think they finished last year 14th in the RPI. They just missed the NCAA tournament in his first year. But uh, uh, they will be – I'll be shocked. They will have to really misstep. Something bad will have to happen for them not to be a force uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the best league in the country. And the best league in the country is no longer the NCHC. The best league in the country is the Big Ten. Don't kid yourself. And uh, they're going to be a uh, force to be reckoned with there. And uh, unless something weird happens, uh, they will be uh, an NCAA tournament team uh, when all is said and done. And then you said it, obviously, Michigan State, great team, just looking at their stats. How, how have the guys been feeling this week, and what's the message, you know, heading into the game on Thursday? Well, last, last weekend, uh, we split with Lindenwood, and people were like, who's Lindenwood? What's a Lindenwood? You know, they're a team that transitioned from, from club. And uh, to be honest with you, like right now, uh, we've got a good Air Force team. Like, I like our team. Uh, we, Blessing gave us good goaltending. I, we were a little nervous about that. But we've got our seven defensemen that we dress. I'm not saying that they're all blue chippers, but seven, that group of seven, we've never had a group of seven that are that many. They're all good hockey players. Um, our four lines, we've got three lines of experience. We have a young uh, freshman line, and th- those guys are holding on. I, I, like, I like our team. We've got a good Air Force team. Uh, our challenges are, is, is college hockey. College hockey is really, really good right now. You take uh, the, f- the fifth year COVID, uh, all those players, everybody being able to keep their best players for five years, and then you combine that with the transfer portal where they've been able to move about freely and the fact there's only 60 college hockey teams. There's not 320. There's, a, there's 60 teams. So... Right now, the market is saturated. The college hockey market is saturated with experienced players. And everybody is good from top to bottom. And, uh, you know, Derek Schooley just had to rebuild uh, the Robert Morris thing after their program went away and and then came back. And uh, what did he do the first weekend? He split with Bowling Green. And Bowling Green's one of the favorites uh, uh, in the the CHA. So it just goes to show you. Look what what Coach Prime has done up at CU. How quick he's turned that around uh, with with the uh, mulligans that are available to the traditional schools so right now like we have to getting back to crescent we, we have to control what we can control uh, we can't control michigan state we can't control this we can't control that we can't control the transfer portal the fifth year COVID. all we can control is ourselves and we like our team we had our meeting yesterday and basically it was a put closure to lindenwood yesterday and today we get going on michigan state and our put closure on, on, on Lindenwood had nothing to do with Lindenwood, had everything to do with us and the things that we need to do better. We need to win more, more, more one-on-one battles. Uh, uh, we need to win uh, more shifts. Um, uh, we, need to cover in our, we need to cover our net front area uh, better than we did uh, last weekend. And, uh, and we, we better darn well improve on some of those things uh, or it could be an awfully long week- weekend for us, an awfully long Thursday and Friday, uh, and a very unhappy Saturday for Coach Frank. Um, so we just need to we need to take a step as a group. And that, in like I said, Michigan State, we know what they are. They're coming in, and uh, uh, and and they've got they're going to come in, and they've got NHL. They've got. Uh, a lot of NHL draft choices, those type of kids that those those high level blue chip players, and uh, they're going they're going to they're going to be a handful. Uh, but uh, you know what? We can be a handful to them as well. Uh, but we uh, uh, we just have to tidy some things up on on our end. You know, I think the best way to put it is, you know, before before you can start to win and beat your opponent, you know, with consistency, you, you first have to learn how not to beat yourself and. Uh, uh, some of the things that led to, to us losing uh, on on Sunday, uh, uh, the bad news is is we kind of did it to ourselves. We kind of be- beat ourselves. But uh, you know, conversely, on the good side, there 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 are items that uh, that we can control. Uh, we can play better as a group of five. We can win more shifts. We can win uh, more one-on-one battles. We can be more accountable and take people's hands away and cover net front better. And uh, ultimately. Uh, you know that's what makes a great service academy team is uh, is just just being being a, a group collectively that's extremely difficult to play against. So uh, kind of in closing, this weekend uh, playing against Michigan State, we need to be 
more difficult to play against than we were last weekend against Lindenwood. Coach, this is your 27th year, correct, at Air Force? Um, 27. How old are you? Does I mean, I, right? I, I've got. Gu- you know, just if you this brought it trivia. up, I just why I like I have I have golf shirts that are older than you <laughs> that I still wear. There you yes, go. Yes, hey. but well, uh, okay. So where where is this going? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I really just want to get your age. No. And I don't color my hair. <laughs> No, I just wanted to know. With, whatever's the, left of it. But. With the new season starting, do you still get that same juice? What's the feeling like for you going into a new season um, with your guys? It's ridiculous. Like, um, and I talk to my buddies about this. You know, like I'm 107 years old. I've been doing this for 78 years. And, uh, you know, last weekend I was talking to my brother. My brother was getting ready to play an exhibition game in Minnesota. Bobby Mosco talking to my buddies. And I'm going like, you know, I still get. I still get butterflies. I still get nervous, you know. And uh, the response back was that, that it's good. I, you know, the, the experienced guys that that uh, that that are friends of mine, mentors of mine, saying, you know, uh, when, when when you quit getting butterflies, when you when you when you quit, uh, you know, when those things go away, maybe that's an indicator that it's time that you go away. Um, but uh, no, after after all these years, I still I still get anxious. I still get nervous. I still get uh, butterflies and uh, uh, probably not really good for my stress and anxiety, but maybe, 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 maybe it's good to in, in maintaining passion in what you do on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. I love it. You're lucky. I, um, you've talked a lot about Michigan State, and I know you're still getting to know your team. Obviously, you had a young group last year. They're kind of maturing this year. Does it give you – obviously, the goal is to go in and win these games, but will it give you guys a good benchmark to go against a team like Michigan State at this early point in the season? No, another good question. I mean, and that's why we play these games, to find out where we sit on the food chain. You know, all right, we played an up-and-coming team that transitioned from – club and we saw how quickly they can get competitive you know now we're going to play against a team on the top of the food chain and uh like we're going to have a good feel of where we sit at least early on in the food chain right now with a you know with these games against michigan state with the four with with the four games that 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 uh that that we've played so um we play these games for a reason um and uh, we try to get a mix of teams, uh, mix uh, a mix in our schedule. The, the 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 biggest thing, like I said, is like right now you can't in college hockey. I was talking to Toll about it the other day. Like it's impossible with only 60 teams and all the players that are available. Everybody's old. Everybody's deep. Everybody's pretty good. Like it's impossible. The GM and me, you just can't go out and schedule wins. There's no easy wins out there. There just isn't. There's uh, there's more good players and good teams. Uh, everybody's good, and uh, and and there's a there's an abundance of of, of competitive players. Uh, but but we play these games uh, for a reason. Uh, hey, Michigan State is on our uh, on our schedule for, uh, for a reason. A, we owe it to our players. They want to play against teams like that they you know we can't play a whole schedule full of them but you need to have some of them on your schedule the players want to play them and you know what the fans want to see them they want to see the Spartans they want a Big Ten team last year when Notre Dame came in here like hey if we want to sell season tickets like we need uh, uh, I guess I put it this way Army and Navy, those games are great, and we don't have Navy, and they don't play hockey at this level, but with the Army. If Army series is the marquee series uh, on our schedule, our schedule's not sexy enough. It's not. It's a great, like, it's a great compliment, but we need to have uh, uh, Michigan State. We're going to be playing Wisconsin. We're going to be playing Northeastern or uh, Minnesota Duluth. Uh, we're we're going to be playing Denver. We're going to be playing Colorado College in addition to our Atlantic schedule. And uh, uh, that makes things uh, exciting for for our players. It makes things exciting for uh, our fan base. And uh, uh, there's lots to look forward to. I couldn't be more excited uh, uh, about the schedule. Um, it, it's challenging. There's no other way to have it. You know, uh, our schedule is extremely, extremely challenging. But with what I told you about college hockey, everybody else's schedule is extremely, extremely challenging. And, and how you respond to those things, um, you know, it, we'll see. That's why, that's why we play the games. You've been obviously dealing with teams in Atlantic hockey that have turned over the roster with transfers, but you look at Michigan State, and to your point earlier, it's been to 
a, a different level, right? So how much tape do you watch or how much homework do you do on Michigan State last year? How do you have to pull up um, stuff on Duluth and Miami of Ohio to get some intel on these other players? How, how much different is your preparation going against a team that has turned over the roster as much as Michigan State has? Um, it, it's, it's hard because you're, you're right. But you know what? Most coaches – Kind of, they kind of do what they do to say that they're not going to throw a wrinkle in. Hey, our football team, like, are, are all of a sudden, uh, are we playing the West Coast offense? No, we're kind of doing what we're doing. People know that. Are, are, is Troy and his staff put some wrinkles into that in, in preparation for an opponent offensively and defensively? Of course. But most coaches kind of, they have a style and a way they play. And uh, as far as film goes, like uh, – Lindenwood, we had nothing on because they were the first two games of the season. We will have film on, on Michigan State. They played two games against Lake Superior. We have it. They have film on us uh, with the Lindenwood games. So um, it's, it's not going to be totally a total unknown. Um, the difference between Saturday and Sunday, to you, you mentioned some of the things that you wanted this team to work on, but what what was the biggest thing that maybe wasn't there Sunday that was there Saturday for you guys? It might not have been us. It might have been Lindenwood. I don't know what you saw up top, uh, Ryan. You got a good eye, uh, but they played harder. Mm -hmm. They played. They didn't come as hard on Friday. They kind of played a trapping style. I don't know if they thought the altitude or whatever, but they kind of played a trapping style. They didn't come hard and exert a tremendous amount of energy. They kind of sat back and tried to uh, create turnovers, have us create turnovers in the neutral zone. They loitered in the defensive zone, and, and their weapon was transition offense and their power play. And uh, that didn't work out too good for them on Friday. And right away, uh, on on Saturday, they they changed their their uh, approach. They came they came hard and they put some pressure on us and uh, they adjusted uh, uh, their penalty killing. Uh, they squeezed us a little bit to the outside and uh, they made some really good adjustments. Uh, no, uh, uh, Coach Zombo and his staff uh, did a good job uh, uh, with their adjustments uh, going into Saturday and and uh, and on our part. Like, we didn't do a very good job of, of coverage around the net. They funneled pucks to the net. We didn't do a very good job. And I think the biggest thing that, that killed us is uh, when it's all said and done, when you have a five-minute major, when you have a five-minute power play, and, uh, and you don't score on that, very rarely is there going to be a happy ending to the story. Um, but your penalty kill was – Good. I mean, the power, the power play maybe needs some tweet, but the penalty kill you guys were good all weekend. I, I, I agree. And uh, special teams are, uh, you know, are big. But you still have to find a way to score goals right. and uh, give, give our guys credit. We persevered. We got behind 3-1, uh, to one, and uh, we showed a lot of substance coming back to, to tie that game um, uh, in the final second. And uh, taking it over into overtime, it's unfortunate that we it would have been a, a, a magnificent win uh, it, to come from behind like that and win. But it, it, it wasn't it wasn't to, to be. Um, we got behind. We chased the scoreboard, and uh, that can't be, become a trend either. Um, you know, teams generally teams the DNA of teams over over the course of a season you either either kind of get into a, a habit where you're finding ways to win one goal games. Uh, or you're going to find you're finding ways to lose one goal games, and with college hockey, like I said, being who you know, being just stacked and everybody being pretty good on most nights, if you're playing hard and they're playing hard, um, there's going to be a lot of close games, and you got to find you got to find a way to win those.